Hello, welcome back. Three years ago, I wanted to visit East Asia for the very first time, and I started to learn a language that many people regard as too intermediate or advanced to learn on a higher scale. I am talking about the Japanese language. In this video, I will show you how to read one of the Japanese alphabets, learn from my perspective, and eventually you will realise that learning Japanese is not that difficult as, as anticipated. Before I continue, just two things, maybe three. First, we are go aren't going to cover every single topic, nor letter in this video, because it's impossible, and nobody actually ever learns that way, do they? Secondly, I'm not an official Japanese teacher. I'm just someone teaching my own unique way of learning Japanese. You may like my own way of teaching, or you may not. Likewise, everyone has different ways of learning, so I can't really argue, argue with that. And thirdly, I'll insert captions and pictures just in case you still got an answer my voice. Hi, Nihongo ga hanesimas. The Japanese language consists of three writing systems two alphabets, hiragana, katakana, as well as the kanji scripts that were imported from China and have as many as 2,000 symbols. This, of course, puts many people off learning the language. So, if you'd like to, to start learning how to read Japanese, then the first cover that I recommend you to do is to start learning hiragana. So, what is it? Hiragana is a phonetic alphabet. Every kanji symbol and names of people and places in Japan can all be spelt with hiragana, for example. Hiragana could also be described as a chart full of syllables. Each syllable consists of one English consonant and one English vowel put together to make a sound. For example, k plus a equals ka. Ka. However, like English, hiragana also has five vowels that can be written by themselves. A, e, i, o, u. And there's also one consonant that can be written by itself. In. And before I start, if you really like to know which books I use to start learning Japanese, I use a variety of books and flashcards that I received one Christmas, which are very useful and, and helpful. But I also bought another book along the way called uh, Mina no Nihongo, which is a very useful textbook for those wishing to study Japanese. However, the book can be quite expensive and it's enti written entirely in the kanji hiragana and katakana. So, if you really want to study, work or live in Japan, then you need to know how to read the language. For now, we'll just focus on learning all the vowels and the word consonants. In. As most of you already know, you'll learn the symbols quicker if you so associate them with something such as a face or an item that you know. Luckily, most of these vowels look like English counterparts, but they sound slightly different, as I'll show you straight away. Ah. To draw this here again, you just draw a cross and a, and a badly drawn circle and it vag vaguely looks like an A. Eh. You have to use your imagination for this one. The only thing I could find in common is that both of these letters can be written from left to right. And also it's pronounced eh, not E. You'll find out why shortly. E. This one basically looks like the letter I that has been pushed over or knocked over. It's pronounced E, not I. Think of it as like the I in pizza. Pizza. Oh, this one looks, does look like the hiragana for A, but I note the dash in the top right corner and the fact it looks more like an O. U. For this one, you take away the dash at the top, turn it on its side, and it looks more like the English U. And it's pronounced U, not U. The reason why is because there is a hiragana for the, for the syllable U. And you'll see it's used in words such as yukata, for example. That's what that word consequent in 
in. In. Well, if you squint very closely like this, you will see that it looks does look like the letter N or a badly drawn shoe. And one more thing, if the UN is in the middle of the word, the next consonant that precedes it is either a B or a P, then the UN will sound more like an M instead. Take for example one of my favourite snacks in Japan, tempura. In hiragana it's actually written as tempura, T-E-N-P-U-R-A, but it's pronounced tempura. Tempura. And also, do you remember a film a few decades ago called Tampopo? It's exactly the same thing. Now, if you're looking for words to make your five vowels of unworked consonant, which you know you're not, then you're in luck. So, if you put U and UN together, then you get UN, which is, is, which is a casual way of saying yes or yeah. For example, un, un, but, demo. If you put two u and one un together, you'll get in, which is a casual way of saying no. The complete opposite. For example, un, un. Mm. It's a bit confusing, isn't it? Another example is the word e. E is the formal way of saying no, and it's two e and one e to make e. But if you use only one e, one e, and put them together, you get e, which means house. So you've got e, which means no, and e, which means house. <laughs> it's a catchy desne. Confusing, isn't it? If that's too confusing for you, then here's one word that you can learn using only three hiragana. It's ma, ta, ne. Put those three together and you get mata ne, which means see you later or see you again. And that is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Hopefully there will be another episode soon in the next couple of weeks and hopefully I will get a haircut by then. But for now, please subscribe, thank you for watching and matinee.